Hey, welcome to Dan's Model Works. And we are back working on the Focal Wolf 200. We're in my, my big workshop, just because a little bit more space here for dealing with the fuselage. Now, last time we were working on the Condor, I mentioned that I was holding off on the fuselage. And the reason for that is, as I mentioned, you can't really see inside here very well. You know, they've gone to the effort of giving you a full interior and you can't see inside there. So, what I'm going to do is, let's just split it here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some lights in here. Basically, I think I'll put a light here, maybe two here, and maybe one in this rear compartment. And there was a time where if you wanted to light up a model, it was a royal pain in the butt. Because you were talking grain of wheat light bulbs, and who knows how long they were going to last and that sort of thing. Of course, now we've got LEDs and little guys like this, SMDs, surface mount diodes. And, you know, one of the reasons why I uh, skipped to working on the, the wings as opposed to working on the fuselage is... Uh, the electronic stores here in town where I had purchased supplies in the past, um, let's see, they've basically gone out of business. So I had to find another store. And I did eventually find a place, and he's been in business for nine years or so. And uh, he basically set me up with these. And like I said, the amount, and of course, if you've used these things, you realize the amount of light they give off is just absolutely astounding. So... The plan is, is I will put these basically just up in, on, uh, in the roof. I mean, theoretically, where they should be located is, it won't let go of it. <laughs> there are some actual light fixtures in here, and I suppose if I had been thinking ahead, I probably could have modified these things to fit inside the light fixtures. But at any rate, if I install these lights, like I said, just up here in the roof, that should light up the interior nicely. So we, when we look inside, we should be able to see a little bit of what's going on. Like I said, I'm going to use these things here, which I believe are called lily pads. And as for power, just going to use one of these things here with the with the, the button style uh, battery and the guy who owns the electronics store said yeah unless you're going to be leaving these LEDs on for long periods of time this thing will last you forever I mean basically I'm going to set things up so you can turn on the light you can look inside and then you turn it off again so where am I going to hide this basically my plan for hiding it is I'm going to use the gondola, which goes on the underside of the aircraft. You can see here the outline of where it fits. And just going to not sure if I've got this the right way around, but I'm going to set this up in such a way that this is held on using magnets. I think it goes this way. I'm sure I'll figure it out eventually. No, it must have been right the other way. There, that's definitely the way that goes. I'll set this up so that this is held on with magnets and the front and the rear of the gondolas, they'll be glued on permanently, but this will be held on with a magnet. So the idea is I'll be able to pull this off 
and our battery compartment will easily fit inside the gondola. He said, confidently. There we go. So that'll fit in there quite easily. Tentatively, I think I'm going to install one light here, two in this compartment, one here, and one here. Tentatively. Because to put one in here would be pretty difficult, seeing as you've got this, this turret right here. Now hopefully there'll be enough light coming from here to light this area up. Now there's only just a small window looking in. And we won't really know till I get all this done whether this will all be for naught, but I figure it's worth a try. Now what I'm going to do is any spot where I'm going to be putting one of these SMDs, I'm going to be painting the fuselage black just to make sure we don't get any glow through it. Now just in case you've never actually seen how bright these little guys are, here's just a, a quick demonstration. That's an awful lot of light coming off this little thing. Now if we look at our center section, you can see that I've got a, a rare earth magnet here and a nut. Now none of this is glued in place yet. However, fortuitously, I'm pretty sure that's a word, if I put the gondola up in place and we look up inside here, you can see that that nut basically is just big enough to touch here and the underside of the fuselage. So if I glue that nut up in here, it should pull this onto the, the underside of the plane with enough force to hold it in fairly tightly. We'll see in a couple minutes here. There's our magnet super glued in place. And since the nut wants to sit there, I'll leave it there and glue it on in place just like that. Okay. That seems to be staying on all right. And it pops off pretty easy. And the locating holes we can use for holding this in alignment. That went on with a nice authoritative click. Alrighty, that's that little detail taken care of. I debated putting the switch inside the fuselage somewhere and having a spot where I could just stick my finger in and, and flick it. And then I thought I may as well just put the on off switch in the gondola because the only spot I could think of putting it would be in this space here, or sorry, this space here, because this is where the door is. When there's a bulkhead here, and there's a seat here, and there's a window that looks in this way, so it would have been pretty obvious. So that's why I decided to install it basically in the gondola where I'm hiding everything else. And this second magnet is basically so that my battery can just fit on there. Originally, I was hoping it was going to be able to go like this and I could glue the, the holder down. But it turns out the only way it'll fit inside the gondola is if I put it upside down. So basically, this magnet is going to hold the battery holder in place and it just seemed like the simplest solution so that's why there's a second magnet inside there so while my camera was charging that's my excuse from sticking to it i wired up the lily pads and i glued them in place and you guys can all save your comments about what a total butcher i am at wiring Hopefully none of the wiring will actually show. I mean, as it is, we, it's almost impossible to see in here anyway. So, that is everything wired up for the fuselage. And we'll just double check that everything's going to work. Yay, it works, it works. Alrighty. 
Now let's see how it looks when I put everything inside it. So we've got the power on and I've already tried this once and it's difficult for my camera to focus into apertures but as we can see by looking in the door there's at least light to see by to see that there is in fact stuff in there and we'll go to this window here now we can actually look in and see that there's a fuel tank in there if we flip around the other side Once again, we can actually see in there and we can see the top of that big ass battery. So assuming that I don't screw up the transparencies too bad, when the lights are on, we should be able to actually see inside. I will make sure that this wire is out of the way. So depending on what is in that turret or that transparency, hopefully we'll be able to see into the rear compartment. Now I thought the next step was going to be a quick one. And that was I was going to put all of the windows in the fuselage here. So that way I could get close to buttoning up the fuselage and moving on with this project. However, I took a quick look at these windows. And if we look at this one right here. Look what happens to that knife as I move it. There is a lot of distortion in these windows. I mean, yes, they're, they're transparent, but there's a lot of distortion. Fortunately, the larger transparency, such as this one and this, there isn't nearly as much distortion. But these side windows, wow, that's bad. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some evergreen acetate for those side windows so that way because i mean we want to see in this plane and we're already facing an uphill battle last thing we want is these windows that'll just reduce everything to a blur hopefully it will be clear by the clearness of the windows that the acetate is quite a bit better than the stock windows. As you can see, this is the stock window here in the front in that round spot. You can see you can't see, can't make out anything clearly through it. These other windows, they really do have windows in them. There's really transparencies. If I flip it over. Now, one thing you want to make absolutely certain whenever you're putting in whether you're using the stock windows or whether you're using some acetate for this sort of application you want to make sure they are solidly in there that they're not going to come out because remember these are these windows are going in place from the inside before we do any painting we're going to have to mask these and whether you put a piece of masking tape on there or whether you use a paint on type of masking product the last thing you want is as you're taking your masking off after you've done all your painting to hear a blink and your transparency disappears inside the plane. So that's one side done, let's get the other side done. And here's my transparencies on the other side. You can see the reflection off the acetate when I get it in the light, so. Proof there is something in there, and once again, we can actually see the interior sitting there on the workbench below, reasonably clearly through it, so. And once again, when we go to the to the round porthole, yeah, you can't see anything. So just as an aside, what I used to glue the acetate in was my Flexifile Plasti Weld. And this is the the really really nasty, you know, rot your brain in California stuff. The reason I used it now it's lightning fast, but it also works on more. Uh, more types of plastic than just ordinary styrene cement and since it's acetate as opposed to styrene I wanted to make sure that the glue actually did attack it and bond it thoroughly to the styrene of the fuselage so these hopefully are not going to pop out at a later date 
Now, since we actually have a pretty good view of the inside of the, the large compartment, especially around the door, looking in from either side, I've decided to add a little bit of framing here to the wall. And all I've done is I've just basically followed the rivet lines on the outside and just to give some sort of relief because I'm sure the inside of this plane is not smooth as a baby's bottom. Most military aircraft don't have an inner skin unless there's some sort of insulation or something like that. And I'm pretty sure that, you know, uh, I mean, I've been on the inside of uh, C-47s and things like that. And all of the interior ribs and that sort of thing are quite open. So I imagine the same thing would be uh, present in this plane. So once all this dries, and here's the other side, once all that dries, I'm just going to be putting a little bit of gray paint on there just to kind of blend everything in. And I don't think it's worthwhile putting any more ribs in than this, although I was tempted just to go hog wild on it. I don't think it'll be worth the effort. All right, I lied. I ended up adding a couple more pieces of framing to the cockpit area. Not sure if it's going to be seen, but just in case. I, I know what will happen is, is if I don't put it in, I'll put the canopy on later and I'll say, oh, geez. So anyway, that just lifens up the sidewall a little bit. I'm sure there'd probably be quite a bit more, but anything else I do would probably be pure conjecture. So that was just what I figured the minimum amount to do would be. Now here's the interior after I've given it a coat of basically Model Master Neutral Gray, one of my favorite colors. Now probably the interior color should be a bit darker gray, but as I mentioned before, we don't want to make it anything inside here too dark or else it's just going to suck up the light. So here you can see the cockpit framing and then the framing in the compartment that we can see in best. And don't forget, as I almost did, the tailwheel well has to be glued in before you put fuselage halves together. Now we're moving into pointed no return territory now. I've glued the interior into the one side here. Now one thing that oftentimes we always forget, I know I sometimes remember at the very last second, if I do at all, is always clean the inside of your transparencies before you glue together your plane or your car or your truck or whatever, because there's nothing worse than putting it all together and then realizing there's a big fingerprint or a big chunk of styrene debris sitting on one of your windows and you can't get at it to clean it up. So that's something you always want to make sure that you've done is wiped off the inside of your transparencies. And that's it. We're past the point of no return. This fuselage is together. Now I did have to apply a moderate amount of force to get the seam to close up. But basically what I did is I started at the tail where the fit was the best. And once again, using my Flexifile, I did a little bit of the seam and I held it tight with my fingers until it was closed up and lined up properly. And then I moved my way along. There are still a few bits. It might require a little bit of sanding. But overall, considering it's two such two very large pieces it's come together fairly well. And as you might be able to see, I've got the lights on inside right now. And I think maybe what we'll do is we'll shut the lights off and we'll just look up inside with the lights on. You'll see just how successful we've been. Okay, so looking in this turret here, You can see the interior details. Same thing if we look in the rear turret. We look in the rear turret and we can actually see all that stuff inside there. We can also see one of the wires, although it's going to be shoved out of the way, hopefully. And 
if we look up inside, you can see the ribbing that I added looking in the side windows. So I don't think it was a I don't think it was a wasted effort here to put the lights in because we can actually see inside. Oh, there we go. There's the BAS battery. Now we're certainly close to the 20 minute mark for this episode of Dan's Model Works. So I think it's about time to wrap it up. Thanks for watching and until next time, just keep on modeling.